Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning. I'm Promise, and you're listening to a day of prayer this morning Bible study. We're glad you could join us, but before we get into the word, let's open up in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for today. Just thank you for giving us this opportunity to to come together and discuss your word, Lord. And Lord, I also just thank you for just giving us everything that we need before we need it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, welcome, everyone. We are glad to have you with us as we continue our study in the book of Acts. And we just want to thank everyone that has joined us. We are grateful uh, for this time together to discuss the word. And I'd like to thank those that continually uh, contribute to this ministry, that partner with us in building the Lord's house and in pushing the, the gospel through the four corners of the earth by liking our episodes, by subscribing on this and any number of the platforms that you find a day of prayer on, and by sharing this message and the messages with others so they too can learn and grow in knowledge and relationship with our Lord and Savior. So we thank you for that, for being a blessing to us, and um, it's for the opportunity for us to, to bless you by discussing the Word and, and to continually hold you up in prayer before our Heavenly Father. So, so thank you. And uh, continue to do so. We certainly appreciate that absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so this morning, we are going to, we're still in, we're in Acts chapter 7. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a, a one-time <laughs> ordeal. We're not going to reread the, the entirety of the chapter. We are going to begin to, um, I'll say really dissect, but get into mm-hmm. the the history lesson and the right? different sections we're going to go section by section exactly mm-hmm. so so this morning we are going to cover um in Acts chapter 7 the first eight verses so can i get a volunteer to read that please i will all right layla then the high priest said are these things so and he said brethren and fathers listen the god of glory appeared to our father abraham when he was in mesopotamia before he dwelt in haran and said to him get out of your country and from your relatives and come to a land that i will show you then he came out of the land of the chaldeans and dealt, dwelt in haran and from there when his father was dead he moved him to this land in which you now dwell And God gave him no inheritance in it, not even enough to set his foot on. But even when Abraham had no child, he promised to give it to him for possession and to his descendants after him. But God spoke in this way, that his descendants would dwell in a foreign land and that they would bring them into bondage and oppress them 400 years. And the nation to whom they will be in bondage, I will judge, said God. And after that, they shall come out and serve me in this place. Then he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob and Jacob begot the 12 patriarchs. Mm, amen. amen. So as is our custom, we are going to open up the floor and give each of you the opportunity to share what the Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you. And then, of course, to ask any questions that you might have. So, who would like to begin? Well, I'll, I'll start. Um, two things that stood out to me just at the top of my head uh, right now is first, um, when the high priest said, are these things so, um, Stefan didn't try to defend himself. He didn't go, mm-hmm. no, I never said that. He didn't take that bait and trail off into trying to uh, preserve his own life or, um, you know, in fear or anything of that nature. And he wasn't offended. Mm -hmm. And it's usually offense that makes us go, no, that I never did that. Or, you know, just even a lack of maturity at times Uh, we get distracted and we take the adversary's bait. You know, he's accusing, accusing, accusing. 
and then someone goes, well, defend yourself, or is that true? Or And it's stuff that you, there is no merit or truth to it. And then we we track off and, and get distracted by that, leading to strife and offense and things of that nature. But because he was so full of the Holy Spirit, and, and what I'm, I mean by that is he sowed to the Spirit versus mm-hmm. sowing to the flesh, and he remained connected and in the moment with the Holy Spirit, and then was able to proceed. And it wasn't like Stefan didn't have a choice in this, because we always know that God does not take away our choice. Mm -hmm. Now, he knows how to convince us, he knows how to persuade us, he knows how to minister to us, but he doesn't take away our ability to choose. And Stefan had every much or just as much the ability to choose to be offended, or to choose to remain in the Holy Spirit, he chose to sow to the Spirit, versus sowing to the flesh. And, um, you know, as the Holy Spirit prompted, just the wisdom to be able to, we know that was the Lord, because like I said, he didn't take the natural stance on it of going yes or no to that question, which is obviously a yes or no question. And, or, or be defensive. No, that's not what we're doing at all. Right. He didn't He didn't go any of that. He preached the word, mm-hmm. which is what the Holy Spirit wanted in that moment. You know, there are times where he says, just be quiet. There are times where he'll say, give you a message. There are times where he says, um, you know, it's something different, but it's all about staying in communion and fellowship and connected with the Holy Spirit there. And as he's, you know, giving a history lesson, but it's also setting the record straight because Mm -hmm. they have cloudy memory. Um, I was thinking back on, um, Acts chapter six, we were talking about, and you know, they're, they're talking about their customs and Mm -hmm. it wasn't the, the law of Moses that they were defending. It wasn't even God. And if you notice how they, they, um, stated the names they will put moses first and then god after Mm -hmm. that moses didn't have anything to offer in his flesh and we we read that in chapter seven he came the first time in his flesh perceiving that god wanted to do something use him but he did it in his flesh hoping everybody would just understand i'm I'm gonna just kill you real quick but y'all know what i mean Uh -uh. That's, that's not what that is that's not the same thing that's not what god said but in that they they put Moses ahead of God, and then they they developed these customs that weren't godly customs, which is why later on he tells them, y'all were serving other gods. Mm -hmm. And um, and not by y'all as though he wasn't a part of that at some point because he had to receive salvation like everybody else. But your memory is clouded thinking you've just been worshiping the Lord and and all the things that you're doing actually came from him. Mm -hmm. Everything that you take as a custom did not come from God. Otherwise, and, and Jesus made this clarification if you were truly looking into the things of moses and if you were truly uh serving you would recognize who i am uh they he he was stating that the the people if they truly had an understanding of who moses was and were truly following from their heart the things of god the law of god given um through moses then they would have recognized jesus and they would have accepted him now they recognized him but then they rejected him Mm -hmm. they would have loved jesus but they didn't. And so I, I like that, um, those things. And then, um, so actually I had three things I wanted to say. So pardon me about that. Um, <laughs> verse five, and it says, and God gave him no inheritance in it, not even enough to set his foot on. But even when Abraham had no child, he promised to give it to him for a possession and to his descendants after him. Um, this speaks to kind of our, our ability to perceive the need for us to persevere in faith. Um, you know, just looking at Abraham's journey and walk of faith with God here, he started in one place that was familiar. God brought him out, took him and and journeyed and made God made promises promises to him in this time and uh, during his journey, but they didn't all come to pass in that moment, and especially in the time frame that Abraham might have thought they should have come to pass. And you know, the this is significant to me here because there's there's seasons in my life that I've been through. And the Lord has said, yep, I'm promising you this, Kamisha, and I want you to walk with me and be faithful to me and trust me. And it's it seemed like it's been delayed. It seemed like it's been put off. It seems like um, everybody is running on past me and going on, but I'm still waiting here in the, the same place that I was before. Mm-hmm. And the adversary could take that and even human flesh or discouragement would take that and go, well, see, God's not bringing to pass his word. God's not keeping his word. He's not doing what he said. But the truth is, God 
is a God of seasons and he's a God of timing and he is faithful to his promises and he is keeping his word and just the not even enough to set his foot on. God promised him the entire land of Canaan. He's giving this land to him and his descendants. But Abraham, for ownership's sake, didn't experience that. But you and I are experiencing that today. And in in particular, natural Israel is living in the land today. Now, they Mm -hmm. didn't finish their their portion of this promise of throwing everybody out and then remaining faithful to God so that nobody could displace them. So now they're fighting and tussling over and they don't have as much. Yeah, and they don't have as much as God actually had gave them, had given them. But they still they still are physically literally living in the land today and then on mm-hmm. the spiritual side of it we are the fulfillment of that promise that god made to abraham and it's still being carried on until jesus comes back god is going to continue to fin- uh, finish and uh, fulfill that promise but the fact that abraham was able to go on and then uh, conceive isaac and his wife was able to give birth to him and then from there we we see jacob uh, it was jacob and esau but jacob was the one that was going to carry the blessing and continue but he didn't give up because he did he 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 didn't go god now listen i don't walk with you from here to here to here and i'm still walking my feet hurt my sandals are worn out and you didn't even give me enough place to put my foot on i'm tired of this lord i'm done he did not do that he did not take that stance with god and he kept his heart open and he kept his faith open. Now he had a conversation and he told God, you didn't even give me no descendants, Lord. Someone in my house is going to be my heir. You're giving me all this other stuff. But the thing that I want, that I actually want, you've withheld from me. And God said, hold up. Wait a second. I need you to walk before me and be blameless. Have a complete and entire faith before me and get it accurate in your mind. Don't forget who I am. And don't forget my kindness and my grace to you. And don't forget who you are because of what I said. And so then Abraham was able to go on. So I I love the humanity of seeing this is what it looks like to walk before God. This is what it looks like to walk in faith. And that's the testimony that we have from God concerning Abraham, that he believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So that that blessed me. That stood out to me in that, that area. Amen. I love how you brought up the the opportunity part. <clears throat> and there is an opportunity that Stefan is presented with here. And and I want to comment on that because it's it's very easy to to have the perspective that Stefan is in defense for his life. <clears throat> and and he mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Right? So so I want to say this about the opportunity. It doesn't always look or uh, we don't always perceive it as it should be. And we cannot in the natural, right? But Stefan, through the leading of the Holy Spirit, was able to recognize this is an opportunity to preach the gospel mm. to this group of people, mm. right? And, and we can fast forward um, to Paul, mm-hmm. you know, later on mm-hmm. in Acts and in other books, Right, how what we would say in the natural, well, man, he just had to suffer and endure a lot. Who is this, Paul? Paul to Uh to to, you know Saul, later the apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. But he even says that it's an opportunity, right? And he actually says to certain groups of people, "I wish that everyone was like me, with the exception of these chains." Right. Mm -hmm. Um. He recognized it as an opportunity. And everywhere he went, regardless of the hardship, being shipwrecked or whatever the situation mm-hmm. and circumstance he found himself in, he, through the leading of the, of the Lord and his Holy Spirit, always came to that perspective. It's an opportunity to preach the word. Mm-hmm. And every letter he wrote, it was an opportunity to share some revelation and some insight. and To impart the word. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Wisdom, guidance, knowledge, and understanding mm-hmm. to others. Both for those that are believers and those that are not yet believers, to make sure that they also have the opportunity to, well, receive insight and view mm-hmm. um, the Lord in the right perspective, Amen. because that that matters, and that's here in this history lesson. But um, before I get into all that, does anyone else have anything there? The Holy Spirit speaking to them about.
I do. All right, promise. <laughs> Sometimes you guys make me laugh because you're looking at us and you're signaling to us, but nobody can hear you on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead, promise. Okay, so Dad briefly touched on the and on the earlier podcast, but how that the Pharisees and scribes were supposed to know the word. Mm-hmm. And so the Lord reminded me of that with knowing the word, they're also supposed to know the meaning. Mm. But, however, when Jesus and Stephen had come and the disciples, and they are talking to, when they were talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees, they rejected and said, no, this can't be right. And so the Lord is showing, showing me that what that people often reject what is right because it doesn't look right. It doesn't look like what they expected. Right? That, that's yes. what you mean by the right, the second. It doesn't look right to them. It means they didn't, it doesn't look the way they expected. It doesn't look the way they want it or think it should look. But our eyes are certainly not the determining factor whether something is right or wrong. Our eyes are not an accurate judge. Because let the light be dim. You think you see something, something else is on your mind. Your eyes will tell you something is, is present that is not actually there. Or your eyes will um, glaze over or mute out something that you do actually see. So right is, <clears throat> is relative in that, that second sense that you used it. Go ahead, honey. And so the Lord showed me that that's why it's important for that's why it was important that the Holy Spirit to come, because in order, in order for us to see the right thing, we had to be open to the Lord to show us the right thing, to show us what's right. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the Lord showed me Proverbs fourteen twelve, where it says, "There is a way that seems right to a man, but the, wait, let me go there." Where it says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but it's in is the way of death. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And something that um, Mommy and Dad have told me about is that if you see the word seems, mm-hmm. then that means it's not right. Mm-hmm. It's a good indicator that it's carnal in nature and that it is not founded on the truth. It is, in fact, a lie. It seems like, well, no, either it is or it isn't. You know, the, the scripture says that Jesus is not a yes and no or um, a yes and no God. He said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. It's not a, he's not a maybe. Well, we'll, I'll think about it. We'll see. That's not who he is. And then also in Revelations, he says, choose. Be hot or cold. But mm-hmm. if you're lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. So he's not a fence rider. He is. If it's a yes, all the promises of God and him are yes and amen. And he's already said no to unrighteousness and wickedness. He is not a part of that. So he doesn't go, well, it's okay for you to be wicked in this case. But in that case, it's not. No. Nope. There's no variation or shadow of turning in him. So he is consistent all the way around. Go on. And so what where Stephen was talking about. With Abraham out said he didn't have a son, then he didn't even have enough to set his foot on the ground that he was going, that his descendants were going to inherit, not inherit, mm. that his descendants were going to have. Mm-hmm. That with that, he had a scene to have the right perspective of the Lord said, sorry, and say, Lord, I know, I know that you, that you have a place for me, and I know this is the right spot. Mm-hmm. Although it may seem like there's no place for me. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. He had to choose to align his vision to see what God had already said. Mm-hmm. He had to choose to agree to do that. And in some ways, it caused him to disregard what his natural eye saw. Because it was trying to draw his focus and attention in another way. And 
if he had pursued what his natural eye saw, he would have called God a liar. But instead, he pursued what his spiritual eye saw, which was based on what God said. And that was attributed to him as, as righteousness mm-hmm. in God's eyes, in God's, God's standard. <clears throat> And then the first verse where it said, then the high priest said, is this so? And so the Lord's talking to me about that. What that? The high priest already knew what it was. What? It, well, it was right because it says inside that verse 15 where it says they saw his face as the face of an angel. Mm-hmm. They ignored a whole bunch of signs to pursue and proceed with sowing to their own flesh. And subsequently, being subject to uh, the adversary, being an available vessel for the devil. But the high priest knew they weren't so because he knew that they dug the liars up. Mm. No, wait a second. How is this same, the same version of what was said about Jesus? Now you're saying exact same thing again. Like, come on now. So, so in other words, the outcome was already determined. Mm -hmm. However, even with them planning and plotting out what was going to happen to Stefan. The Lord still gave them an opportunity, even in that moment, right? Which, isn't that exactly what the Lord says about the the Holy Spirit? Right? In that he always gives a a way of escape. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Even when we are tempted or tested, that the Holy Spirit always provides a way of escape. A way to... Um, turn back from committing the sin that we may be in progress of committing. Exactly. He always provides a way of escape However, and a way for us to endure when it's hard testing. He absolutely. Boat, but if we're if it's the sin track, he always leaves a door for you to exit that highway and not finish that thing out and oh. to turn around and repent. And then there is also, we have to choose to, to be in tune with him and to take that that, that exit way. ramp. Yes. I, I see it like a highway and like, there's my exit. The Holy Spirit's going like, hey, you better take this. <laughs> this is the last free one. You better get off, <laughs> get off the toll highway. Road. There's a right. toll coming ahead. There's a price coming ahead that you're exactly. going to pay if you continue on this way with this sin. There's a price coming. But here's the last free exit for you. Go ahead and get off. Now we live in a toll, a toll happy uh, oh, yes. <laughs> area here. So we pay attention to those signs in the natural because we don't want to pay tolls at times unless, you know, we need we have to but so, there's no have yep. to sin so exactly take that free exit because he gave it to I you i know for we're not talking about the the tolls for the express uh exactly. highway express portion lane. Oh. so go do not pass go go straight to hell right no, thank <laughs> nope, you. Nope. <laughs> no we mean specifically yes <laughs> not jail but hell <laughs> that's right yeah we don't want to do that this is the last exit before the tolls before the mm-hmm. the cost is is mm-hmm. due start setting in so mm-hmm. take it or don't right but that's a choice but he does do his due diligence to provide that way of escape. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so another opportunity that's mm-hmm. been presented. Mm-hmm. That was it. Anyone else? I do have something very quickly. Okay. Well, please okay. share, sir. Um, the first thing the Lord pointed out to me was in verse 2 when it says that he appeared to Abraham. Abraham, when he was still in Mesopotamia. And the Lord just had me go back and look at it. And just compare all the things that were happening. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because as we think these are heathens. and Who are heathens? From where Abraham was coming out. And it just Mm -hmm. surprised me. If you continue to look at it. How everybody knew what the voice of the Lord was. If you see it with Abimelech. When the Lord said Mm -hmm. you better not do Mm -hmm. this. He understood Mm -hmm. who it was. And the Lord showed me that the same is true for the Pharisees. And the council here, they obviously knew who it was. There was no ignorance. Or as Paul said, he didn't have to actually ask, who are you, Lord? It's already known. We all know it deep within ourselves. And the Lord showed me here is that this is the same thing. Mm -hmm. They understand that it was by the Holy Spirit that Stephen was speaking. Mm -hmm. And which would take me to another thing I need to say when we get to the end. Okay. So then we'll, we'll, oh, you're talking about oh, when we get the to the, of le- the later seven? sections. Okay, okay. I was yes. at the end. I was like, we're about at the end now. What, what you waiting <laughs> on? Let's go. Um, but I, I do like that trajectory that you're taking mm-hmm. there because Holy Spirit spoke to them through Gamaliel already and said, yes. leave these folks alone. 
because you're going to find yourself fighting against God. Mm -hmm. Wait it out and let's see. But they said, no, we're going to beat him. Now, then we're going to go find liars because the book of because the law of Moses said out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. But it wasn't let lies be established. So they're manipulating and twisting. Again, with their own customs, because this did not come from God. Well, Lies did not come from God. There's one more thing, right? And this is a natural perspective. Okay, well, we won't go after these two. We'll go after the other ones. The semantics. Right? Is that what you're talking about, what? baby? As though we are tricking God hmm. with our sleight of hand? But how many times have we all tried to do that in our own lives? I have, well, I didn't I touch you, that one, it. right? So, like, didn't King Saul do the same thing? Well, mm -hmm. so I did everything he said, but but I left some of these choice for, ones for you, for Lord, you, for you, Lord, mm. out of my love for you. I'm doing it for you. I'm disobeying Lord. you for you, God. Mm. Yeah, how much sense does that make? None, None at all. But I've been guilty, and I thank we you, God, have. for being merciful towards me. Uh, amen. All right, and give me the opportunity to repent. Amen. Amen. So, amen. So I just want to encourage you. If you have done that, repent. Mm -hmm. Come humble yourself. Repent and come back into alignment with the Lord. Amen. That's an easy day. Mm -hmm. His doors are always oh, open. It's easy if we choose to do that. Amen. Fully, like with our our whole heart, choose to do that. Amen. So, um, that being said, let's pause there for today. And can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, LaCharles. Lord, I just thank you for everything that you continue to do in our lives, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you that you have given us your Holy Spirit, Lord, and that he's always speaking to us, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you that you do not be quiet, Lord, even if we are not listening to you, Lord, but that you continue to come, Lord, and to get our attention, Lord, and draw us off that path, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you for your grace and your mercy that you show towards us daily, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you, God bless you, and have a wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. This year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things through A Day of Prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord has placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select Partner. Complete the form, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.